Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be learning how to draw Elsa from Frozen, and oh my goodness, so many requests for this topic. Um, but if you want to follow along with this, we got three lines here that are three centimeters apart, so six centimeters top to bottom, again, if you want to follow along. But I wanted you to see there's a certain amount of space above and a considerable amount of space below. That's where her shoulders are going to go, if you want to set up your page uh, just this way. But I'm going to zoom in now on these lines so that we can get into drawing the facial features. Okay, well, before we get underway, I should probably put up the time-lapse warning. There's going to be a lot of time-lapse in this video. I'll do my best to do real-time uh, whenever possible, but let's begin by putting down some basic guidelines for the eyes. Okay, so the first thing I noticed when sort of studying the eyes was that uh, the outside edge of the eye, uh, the corner of it is much higher than the inside corner of the tear duct. So that's something you want to pay attention to. The space between them, also important. Um, the location uh, in relation to this line, just a touch above it. Uh, it's a shame that it doesn't end up... Uh, this, is, this line is her hairline and this line down here is the chin. Uh, but if you can get the eyes just a tiny bit above, that'll help you get the sizing of that right. And then uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, you can start to see that the one of the eyebrows is sloping in a different direction. That's going to give her a slightly sly, <laughs> mischievous kind of a look later on in the drawing. Let's go ahead and draw the nose. Okay, so uh, here are some of the lines of the nose, and uh, in actuality, when we get to finishing it up, it's going to be considerably more detailed uh, than this. Um, but uh, notice that it's a little closer to this line uh, than it is to that lower line, and uh, the mouth, uh, fortunately, is going to come uh, more or less right in the middle. Let's go ahead and uh, draw that line. Okay, so here's the uh, the mouth, uh, you know, including the lips. And uh, one thing I noticed as I was studying her face is that the lips are really quite thin. Um, notice the nose, how the nose uh, is kind of positioned with the tear duct of this one eye. Comes straight down, and then you kind of move over um, a little bit to the uh, center area of the lips. And so uh, hopefully those tips will help you in uh, doing this drawing. Now we come to the hardest part of all, and that is to draw this one line that comes down along the chin. So uh, let me go ahead and draw that to the best of my abilities, and I'll uh, come back and give you some tips. Okay, well, um, you can see uh, the line of the cheek, really quite a complex one, and I can't really tell you anything in terms of a, a trick for doing it, except to pay attention to, um, you know, the sort of double curve structure here and how it nearly touches this eye, uh, comes quite close to the mouth, and that'll help you sort of get that where it needs to be. And, you know, I uh, started to indicate the ear over here. But what I want to do now in real time is start to get into some of the details of the eyes. And the um, first thing I'm going to do is add some... Um, uh, darker eyelashes up here on the top. Now, as I studied um, uh, these illustrations, and I should say that, you know, uh, what I'm trying to emulate here are these computer graphics illustrations that you see, like, on the posters and stuff for um, Frozen, and that's why um, there's going to be a lot of time lapse in this video, because when you try to uh, emulate CG with uh, the human hand, it just takes you a long time, because those illustrations are very smooth. Now, um, I noticed uh, in a way that I hadn't when I was watching the movie that her um, upper eyelashes are very thick, very tightly packed. Um, so, I don't know, is she wearing <laughs> false eyelashes? No, how dare you! accuse her of false eyelashes. No, she naturally was born with these beautiful, lush, thick eyelashes. And um, as is so often the case, the lower eyelashes are not nearly as thick. Um, so I'm just going to put some, you know, sort of lighter indications. I do apologize that I can't zoom in any closer than this. I really wish I could, but the uh, camera starts to go out of focus if I do. Um, another thing that I noticed as I studied these eyes was the size of the pupils, really large. Um, and in a way, you know, doing this video to me was an, an interesting prospect because I wanted to compare uh, the Disney facial style with that of, um, you know, a lot of manga illustrations that I see. And, you know, what are the differences? What makes this different? And, um, you know, these round, uh, the perfectly round irises with the gigantic um, pupils, that might be something that's a little different from uh, not all manga, but quite a number of them. Uh, and then um, we're going to get this uh, extra line in here for the fold of the upper eyelid. I think this is particularly important with the character of Elsa 
um, who is, she has this, um, I keep coming back to the word sly, which I don't think is the best one, but uh, anyway, she has this very confident look, and I think that is assisted by the um, slightly heavy looking eyelids. Makes her look a little more grown up, a little more sophisticated, maybe. I'm going to come over here and uh, show how quite different the eyelashes look over on this eye because she's turned in space. Um, and uh, you just, you're just you seeing these eyelashes from a different point of view over here. But you can see that they kind of break that contour line of the um, you know side of the face. Um, another thing that I noticed that I thought was interesting, I hadn't noticed this before about Disney style, uh, one of the defining characteristics of, uh, I would say, like 95% of manga eye illustrations is that they don't draw the uh, tear duct. Um, very often there's blank space uh, right here in the area where the tear duct should be. Um, and so as I looked at the Disney style, I noticed that while they did continue that line there, um, they do very much uh, not draw a little pink dot here where the tear duct ought to be. So it seems that they are in agreement, the Disney people and the uh, manga uh, anime people, that um, there's no need to draw a little pink fleshy area of the tear duct uh, on these cartoon characters. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. Although people historically will point out that um, you know the original uh, manga inspiration was in a Disney cartoon, so I suppose it's not all that surprising. Anyway, I'm getting that in there, and um, like I said, I'm not going to be able to do loads and loads of real time in this video, but I felt that people who wanted to draw Elsa certainly would want to draw her facial features first and foremost. So I wanted to slow down here a little and, and kind of walk you through this process. The coloring is going to be pretty decisive um, in terms of making it look like Elsa, because I realize it doesn't quite look like her yet. Another thing, uh, comparing manga uh, or anime illustrations with uh, Disney, sort of Disney house style, is that the nose uh, in the Disney style, even you know CG style, is given quite a bit more prominence. And you can see me sort of refining the nostrils and so forth. I almost never see a um, manga or uh, uh, anime uh, illustration that defines the characteristics of the lower part of the nose nearly as much as this. Um, so that's something that maybe makes it a little different. And I may need to keep working on that. It's look, <laughs> looking a little weird to me. Forgive me, folks. This is, as I said, this is my first time doing a Disney-style illustration. Um, but as I said, very um, thin-lipped. And then she's going to have um, uh, a little bit of a, as I said, mischievous smirk, shall I say? A bit of a smirk on her face. But that is mostly going to be done by shading. So I'm not going to like draw a line there like you sometimes see people do. And um, maybe it's time, sadly, to kick it back into time-lapse. I'm going to pull the um, uh, camera back or, you know, refocus the camera so that we can draw the neck and the shoulders. Okay, well, so here you see um, indications of the shoulders. Um, pay attention to the length of the neck. I was surprised at actually how long-necked she is. And uh, what I'm going to do here, um, just a little bit in real time, is start to show the upper part of that neck, give you some sense of the um, width of it, but she's going to have her uh, like ponytail coming down and cross uh, across here. So I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to bother with uh, defining that neck too much uh, in that area. Um, this is not going to be a video so much about the clothing. I may just have to dash that in at the end. But let's go ahead and do some of the basic guidelines of the hair because I know that's an important part for um, people to learn if they want to follow along. Okay, so these are just the very basic uh, indications uh, of her hair. We're going to build on top of this to make it look more like the real uh, hairstyle and the uh, ponytail coming down here. So you just want to sort of pay attention to the distances of the lines between, you know, as it gradually tapers a little coming down to the bottom. Um, and, uh, yeah, basically I'd pay a lot of attention to the distance between this line and that one to make sure that you're getting enough uh, space there. Uh, in terms of, you know, you don't want her head to seem too small or too large. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add just a few more lines, and then maybe we can do a little bit of real-time drawing again. Okay, so you can see that uh, while I was down here, I decided to add the line for the, you know, upper uh, part of her dress, which, uh, of course, comes partially off the shoulder. That's uh, something you'll want to get into your drawing. And um, now I want to do a little bit of real time for um, uh, lines of the hair. 
And that may be one of the last uh, things that I can do um, purely real-time in this video because there's just so much <laughs> yet to do and I, I don't want this video to go on, go on forever. But you can see how I got uh, a couple of uh, swoops in here. That's one of the defining characteristics of her hair. The swoops. The copyright <laughs> classic Elsa swoops. And uh, here we're going to get um, just a little bit of a... Um, oh boy, it reminds me almost of like Superman has that little S that comes down. Who knows? Maybe Elsa has a secret identity. Um, but uh, the, this is quite uh, smaller than these other gigantic swoops that go across the top of her head. Um, let me know if you think swoops is the proper <laughs> terminology. Maybe we can come up with something else. Um, but uh, her hair, uh, when we get to the coloring, is really going to be uh, what uh, defines it um, as Elsa. She has, a, I think, a very distinctive shade of like super light blonde hair, almost to the point of being white, but not quite white. Um, and uh, each one of these uh, swoops has, uh, you know, sort of a few subdivisions. Uh, over here, I want to break this into um, two or three. It's almost like a pompadour. It sort of reminds me a little bit of like a hairstyle where it brushes up and back. Uh, uh, that makes her hairstyle certainly very distinctive uh, as compared to that of uh, Anna. Or should I say Anna? I really enjoyed Frozen. I just should say that I took my daughter to see it, um, you know, back uh, during the holidays when it first came out. Really great movie. If you haven't seen it, by all means, you definitely should. Uh, although I'm guessing a lot of people watching this video have seen it at least once, maybe more than that. Um, oh yeah, there's a kind of a, 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 a final swoop. The final swoop that comes down here and uh, comes around... Uh, sort of loops around, seems to be going all the way around the back of her head, and conceals the ear. Speaking of the ear, I was, here's another one of these things, as I studied these, um, you know, actual illustrations from the, you know, promotional material of the movie, that uh, the ear is something that I think is quite different from manga uh, style illustrations. It is very greatly minimized, and they um, it almost sort of looks like a um, piece of plastic that has been molded to look a little bit like an ear. I'm not even going to draw lines here. It's all going to be done mainly by way of um, coloring. Um, but that's one thing you'll notice when we get to that part of the illustration, that I'm not drawing the actual you know, lines of the interior of the ear. Uh, to any degree at all, really. Um, I have another video that talks about drawing braids. I think I'm going to leave it to that video if you want to learn how to draw braids. Um, I'll put a link in the info box. That video really does take you through in a line-by-line -line way. I'm going to have to speed through this one so that we can get onto the coloring. But let's go ahead and uh, finish off the basic guidelines of the braid. All right, so that sort of finishes off the um, pencil line part of the video. Uh, and I'm going to move on into adding color. And it's going to be, uh, to begin with, mostly watercolor. Just going to be using very light watercolors, maybe a more intense uh, blue for the eyes here. And then um, I'll carry it to completion, uh, I would say mainly by way of colored pencil. But let's go ahead and do the watercolors. Okay, so you can see the colors are really quite light, um, probably much lighter than I would normally do them. But again, I looked at the um, source illustration, and uh, her skin, first of all, is very pale, as you would expect. Doesn't get a lot of sun, does she? <laughs> Living up there in the snowy peaks, as she does. Um, and then, like I said, the hair, also very, very pale. Uh, blonde. So you have to, you know, put a lot of water in with your yellow, uh, if indeed you're doing uh, watercolors. And then, um, yeah, maybe a little more intensity on the color of the eyes, the blue eyes and uh, the lips. Uh, what I'm going to do now is to zoom in. We're going to do a little real time with my trusty black Prismacolor. Oh, how I've missed you, black Prismacolor. And we're going to do the eyes and a little bit of the mascara, which is actually very important, uh, I find, uh, in terms of identifying this character. Uh, is, it is my, no, eyeshadow, not mascara, right? I don't know. 
I never know the words for anything. People, you know me, I don't know. But uh, when I get the colors above her uh, eyes on the eyelids, um, those sort of purple pinkish colors really go a long way towards helping us identify this character as Elsa. Well, let's go ahead and zoom in and I'll start to do the eyelashes. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start doing, I think I'm going to restrict myself to this one eye here, and then we'll uh, do the second eye in uh, time lapse. And so I'm going in here with my freshly sharpened uh, black Prismacolor to start darkening in the eyelashes. As I said, very thick, very lush, very tightly packed. And the direction of the lines, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, um, from the, from the distance of the camera, but uh, they're going a little bit straight up and then they begin to really start curving outward uh, as we reach the edge of the eye. And then um, you will want to be very careful as you um, blacken in this lower eyelash. It's going to have to be a pretty thin black line that follows along here and then, as I was saying before, sort of trails off as it nears the area of the tear duct. And uh, as I looked at these, you know, sort of CG illustrations, um, there is no line of any kind in that area of the tear duct. It's really just a change in colors, um, maybe a bit of shading that defines that. Now she looks spooky, <laughs> undeniably, with these big white dots in the middle of her um, irises, uh, the pupils, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, darken these in. I'm going to leave a little bit of a space here, although I think I will have to pull out my trusty white gouache. Oh yeah! At the end of the um, illustrating process, I'm leaving a little white dot there, you see, for a highlight. But, um, yeah, you know, this is the one thing about this, if you've seen any of my illustrations where I color stuff, sometimes I've, I've inked things in, I've done, you know, heavier line work than this. Um, I found in my attempt to emulate the CG um, animation uh, illustra illustration style that I couldn't have a whole lot of bold black lines, and that's why, um, you know, I, uh, I, started, I added color at a point where the lines were still very pale, and uh, certain parts of it will never get um, any sort of line treatment. It'll all be just differences in tone. But um, another thing to be careful about, outlining the iris, getting a nice um, smooth black outline here. Now, let's see if I can locate <laughs> my colored pencils that will allow me to do um, some of the eyeshadow. I think it's eyeshadow up here. Yeah, does that make sense, people? And uh, what you do is uh, you get a nice um, purple-ish color in here. I'm starting with a fairly light one. Um, having it darken a bit as it comes down towards the tear duct. Also darken at, at the upper edge there where it is um, the fold of the eyelid. Kind of comes over here and joins into that area of the uh, eyelashes. I may have to make those eyelashes even thicker. And then I'm switching uh, yet again to a pink, and there's just above the area of the eyelid is a pinkish area. Not very, you don't want to fill in this whole area with pink, it's just a little bit of a uh, strip of pink that very quickly fades into the rest of the, uh, what do you call that, I suppose, the <laughs> area between the uh, fold of the eyelid and the eyebrow. Who knows? Maybe I'm off the hook. Maybe there is no word for that. This space here <laughs> is the best we can do. Um, but yeah, that kind of gives you some idea. I think maybe I'll get a little pink in here. I'm going to uh, be doing quite a lot of shading and refining and polishing, mostly with colored pencils at the end of this video. There's no way that I could do that live. Sorry about that, folks. Um, and, um, yeah, like I said, this is, I'll end up just sort of repeating this process over here, but, uh, let's see if we can do something with these, uh, lips. I'm going to shift the camera down and we'll work on the lips. So I'm going to try to do something here with the lower lip, which is looking a little too dark, uh, to me right now. So I've just added water to my brush. I'm going to go in here and um, sort of loosen up the paint that I had applied with just pure water. Then I take a piece of tissue and let's see if this works. 
dab it away. Yeah, there you go. So that lightened that up a bit. I don't know if that seems like such a dramatic thing, but that's going to help as I um, add more um, coloring here to these uh, lips. I'm going to have to let this dry, though, for a second. So hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm taking a pink uh, colored pencil, darkening the uh, area of the upper lip, which I may have made a touch too thick. My apologies. The, the lips really are quite narrow in the actual, um, you know, on model illustration work. But I'm darkening in the, uh, the lower part of the lower lip to give a little more form uh, to that area. And I may even go in here with a little bit of uh, brown to sort of darken things further. Now there's an awful lot of shading that goes into doing uh, the nose and uh, the sort of cheek area. I'm going to have to sadly do that in time lapse. But I thought one last thing that I could point out is that her eyebrows are uh, brown. Even though her hair is so... Um, you know, very pale blonde. So what's going on there? Is she dyeing her hair or is she dyeing her eyebrows? What is the explanation? Maybe some people naturally have the sort of split uh, two different colors. Let me know in the comment section. Is that something that happens naturally where your hair color uh, can be a very pale blonde and then your eyebrows um, are brown? I don't know. I really no, but after reading the comments section, I will know. I'm pretty sure. My, <laughs> my uh, viewers are good that way. They're going to come in. and Now, uh, I'm just pointing out here, most of the illustrations of um, Elsa have her have this, like I keep saying, sly, so this sort of the angry-looking eyebrow on one side. That combined with the smile, the curving smile, there gives her that slightly mischievous sort of look. Um, in fact, uh, you'll find some, if you look, uh, you know, Google image search, you'll find some with very exaggerated sly or, um, expressions. I wanted to go for a slightly more neutral look. I didn't want to have her face sort of contorted into this very extreme expression. So, anyway, I'm afraid I'm going to have to switch into the polishing phase, which, as I said, mostly involves colored pencils, but you're going to see me gradually build up some tone here uh, in the area of the face. I'm going to start adding details to the hair. I, you know, I'm sorry, I wish I could go into all of this in real time, but it's just impossible uh, without making a super long video. So, um, uh, bear with me. I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish up this illustration all in time-lapse, then I'll be back to offer some final uh, tips on the uh, process that I used. Alright, well there's my video on how to draw Elsa. Sorry I had to do all of the coloring in time lapse, but let me know in the uh, comment section if you'd like to see me do a video that focuses exclusively on shading the hair and the skin and so forth. I would be happy to do that for you. But for now, let me thank anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books. We got Brody's Ghost and Miki Falls, my two graphic novel series, as well as, as, well as Mastering Manga 1 and Mastering Manga 2, uh, available in other languages like German, French, Spanish, uh, Korean, Chinese, and even Polish. So thanks so much to any of you who support me that way. But uh, for now, let me go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it useful, and I'll be back with another one real soon.